All right, so the Solo de Pred journey continues, and today we are in Diamond 1, and I figured that we're going to go through me just, as usual, talking about my decision-making, and I actually ended up figuring out a tiny little secret in how to climb ranked in this specific split, because there seems to be a certain meta, and uh, as we all know, with a meta, there's a counter meta, which you can abuse to get RP or win games or whatever. So what I found out is that you just want to play edge forehead. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's kind of the gist of it. And we're going to be watching what exactly happens in, in this video here, in this VOD here. And it'll be a perfect example on how to play it all the way to the end. Super excited to show you guys this VOD. It is immaculate. And leading up to this point, we had a lot of games where I kind of dropped central, I dropped hot, and it just never worked. We took early fights, looking for third parties, you get eight. Uh, you know, 6th, 8th, ninth party, you just couldn't get a run from it. So this game we did a bit differently, we landed on uh, on uh, staging, always get these two wrong, and then just looted. We started it off with just looting. We're not forcing a fight early on, we're not taking a third party early on, because a lot of people are going for that. And it is, it's, it's, I, it's certainly good to go for the third party early KP, because you want KP. Um, but with how the lobbies were this specific night, I was actually better, I figured that I would be better off not wasting time or risking myself in a third party. Um, because if you fight, you'll invite the whole server to come fight you. You need to make sure that if you take a fight, there's no third party, so you can actually do it properly. Um, and I figured that, yeah, let's just try to play proper edge, hard edge. And yeah, we'll clean teams up if it if it comes to it. But the point is just to play play edge, get loot, and stay alive. Now my teammates, they had a different read, and they were already uh, going for picks here with the bow. So I gotta catch up. Thankfully, playing Maggie, and I'm ultimate. It charges in. I don't even know. I think it's like probably like a minute and a half at most. It's super fast. But so I was just rotating at that point. So my teammates got into a bit of a trouble. You see how Rafe is. Phoenixing up and uh, Jibby is, uh, well, he's full. A team is ziplined up here. Just a, that's the context. You see one of them right there. And I'm just trying to pro provide a little bit of pressure. We do have a low key crossfire setup here. Good beam, not my cleanest shots, but we got him. Papa Yeager. That doesn't really do nothing. No. Sometimes it does that. Like, I've been figuring out, I've been playing a lot more of Maggie lately, and I feel like her drill is really inconsistent. I, sometimes you can hit the ground and it'll, it'll damage someone next to it, and sometimes it won't, so it's worth a, worth a shot. So this is presumably, I've turned off dialogue, uh, I'm probably going to turn it back on soon, it's definitely shot me in the, in the foot more than it's helped me, and uh, it doesn't warn me whether this is a third party, but it makes more sense that this is a third party than it is the team that we just fought, because yeah, yeah, why would someone be all the way over there? And they actually Val culted out here. Actually, it was just one guy Val culted him. It was one guy, probably that was the same squad, but it were people around there, so forced him out, I assume. I didn't even ping them, they saw them. So we're running forward here. They they saw or heard something, I'm not sure. I guess they had they had they knew where this other team was. And I ended up getting a good beam here. Almost got the Wraith. But uh close enough with no cigar. But she's white. Uh she's alone on the high ground, everything's on the low ground. We have momentum, we have decent armor, so I'm definitely feeling like we can go for this. And I push up. If you are not my cleanest shots on the Gibraltar. It's a bit hard with a 1x, um, even a holo R301, and then like no stabilizer, no mag, but try to make two, you gotta make two. The best so they're really just scattering here, and you just gotta find one. Like they're scattering, you just gotta choose one and chase them and try to push them, but we can't really find where they're going. We don't have a, we don't have a wall hack legend, we don't have Seer, we don't have Blood on, so it's hard to say. But uh, they spotted one guy playing right here. So we're moving up again. We, we want to fight. We know these guys are not that well off. We have uh, purple and blue. <laughs> and now we all have purples. Uh, huge nade, by the way. So that takes Wraith down, and then we just want to move up on that. Again, like, you're really noticing this. I'm really noticing it comparing it to other VODs, that when you get an opening, you just gotta press it. But this team, they're doing the opposite. <laughs> they know that they, they're just not in a good position and it will just continue running away. They probably also know that if you do take an unfavorable fight on World's Edge to split, you will get third party. And since it is an unfavorable as fight as hell for them, uh, they're just getting out of there. They aren't aware that I'm completely out of uh, shield cells, that's for sure. And now we're just rotating in. 
So I was debating ulting here or not, because it is loud and I could hear it, but I decided I'm going to take the risk. I think the odds of someone playing the edge here are very low. So we're just going for it. Overall, a good rotation. We got some heals out of it. We got some meds out of it. Uh, all that type of stuff that we needed. Still, you know, in not the best loot wise, but we are way better off than when we headed down to a tree. What's funny is we're actually turning, <laughs> going straight back to where we dropped it. It happens way too often. And, and uh, it, it's happened to me in tournaments before. It happened to me when I was in Poland. It's a horrible feeling when you rotate out and the zone is pulled straight back. Good poke here using the wall hack with the Maggie. So this is a little bit of exposed for me. My, I'm peeking the map. I see my teammates are kind of far back. I wanted to send it, but that would be a very bad push. I chill a little bit. I'm like, okay, we need the opening here. So I back up a little bit. I'm just watching. I went for my riot drill here to put a little bit of damage down on the... I think it's a Valk. That is a Valk. It was a favorable trade, but not the best. Also, do you guys want like 100 hours on Maggie? Let me know. Like, it'll probably take a while because... Does this end here? Normally we do 100 hours on a specific, like, a, in a certain degree, we do it the same with the guides. We do the more popular legends first. But uh, I feel like my a lot of people like to see my Maggie play, so maybe maybe we'll push that up a little bit. I've been told my drills are very good. So either way, these guys let, uh, let us off here, and I think that was a good call. This fight, in general, is just not a good fight. This team is just chilling there. They're not going to try to move. Get tabbed down for a second here. I was just looking at something. And, uh, you know, the map. You know, I have hacks and all. So, either way, this team moves up now. And we have, a, honestly, a good spot. So, it's kind of flipped on its head. If they're in the house here, they kind of are, uh, you know, in the advantage. There's a risk of third party, but that's it. But if they step out into the open, uh, even if Rafe was over here, which was uh, which she was initially, we have... Um, they don't really have cover. We have a good angle on all of them. We have head glitches, all of us. But Rafe is in a bit of a pressure point right now, and the other team has noticed that, so they are applying pressure. That being said, I'm still being very vigilant if they try to make a move. I just have to hit my shots, put damage down, as... Um, which also, Gibraltar knows, he knows that's how it do be like that. And uh, what ends up happening here, and this is another reason why playing Edge is really good, especially with the amount of control that we have, is that the other team, because of how long we saw the fight, ended up getting third partied. Most likely by a team that's rotating in. I can't say for sure. Uh, they could also just be hearing the gunshots and going for it. I, I wouldn't know. NA, NA is weird sometimes. 2v2? And for, yeah, I don't think for the, the last few of these videos, we were not playing in NA. Maybe one of the last videos. That's because, to address that, it's because of the cheaters. EU is crazy. Uh, his Watson actually tweeted about this recently. Uh, around a certain time and in certain regions, you just cannot play Apex. It is impossible because of all the cheaters and, and high ranks, so you just don't do that. So we're using my ultimate here, we're falling back, just looting up, healing up, resetting. Um, my call was to go really far back because I wanted to apply uh, deep pressure if needed, and which ended up heading, you know, getting me to kill on Seer there. I wanted to play this head glitch specifically. And and then we'll be able to hold the other team if they do come rushing out. Otherwise, I would have to play, for example, a box. This is not a lot of cover. And I assume what happened here, this was the third party. They ended up dropping down. They were fighting someone on the low ground. And uh, that was not a good idea. Not a good choice for them at all. Because if you look at the zone, it's closing. 25 seconds left. And uh, now Rafe was trying to make something happen. And I think Gibraltar also had an angle, but I didn't. Looking at this VOD now, I do regret standing here and like looting instead. Um, but it wasn't really much I could do either way. Because they're stuck in the zone. Like, I literally cannot do anything. We heard a Watson or rather uh, Valkold go off, and he left. So, there wasn't much we can do there, but we still have a lot of control now. Uh, now, I expected the zone to end somewhere on here. I know that one normally looks differently, but it, uh, may, maybe maybe it pulls away either way. Oh, now, it doesn't. Instead, it pulls to landslide. Look at this map. I need to start opening the map more often. I'm, I'm really just mostly following what my teammates are doing in W King, but... It's always good to regularly open the map, guys. Let that be a piece of advice. So this is a little bit greedy, but I'm just going to walk back here, secure the loot, make sure nobody's behind us. We notice that we know that one team is uh, right here on the high ground, They're just sitting there. And uh, I'm just going to loot up a little bit and, and get something better. We've been in shambles for the majority of the game, and I'm thinking about it. And yes, we're grabbing the wingman. You boys know what time it is. It's wingman time. And we just looted up a little bit here, just to make sure that we had all the stuff we could get. Because when God opens a window, you jump through it. I think that's what the saying says. 
Either way, so we, we walk up here now, he's applying a little bit of counter pressure. That's one of the benefits of having a wingman here. Also, I have 10 batteries, so I'm not really worried as long as they don't crack me or kill me. I think I'm chilling. Uh, odds are they don't have nearly as much loot. They do have a bow, however, so you gotta... I think, I think, I think the bow wins out and trades more often than not, but other than that, it's kind of fine. So we're walking up here, taking a space. Wraith does a very smart portal here, unprompted. Um, he portals forward, so they can apply pressure on that side, this team isn't in, and zone is about to close. Um, this ends up pincering them, and forces them to run straight into the Wraith, who is now going to be sitting on the high ground. Now, there might have been a team on the right side, I'm not entirely sure what happens there, but it worked out. And I'm just applying pressure with the, uh, with the wingman here, shooting them in the side. I'm aware of the portal's whereabouts, Gibraltar took it, but uh, I want to provide pressure from the side here. As long as I'm alive here, they can't move freely, even though I'm taking shots, even though I'm not shooting them back. Just me existing stops them from being able to uh, run in this whole open area here. They could take the zip line, but then they're exposed to those guys here uh, on, on the side. So there's just no good way of them for them to come out of this alive. And they just end up running in the open. And now I'm not hitting the shots. <laughs> Lots of that today, but it does force them to go on the far side to cut themselves off from me. And they're just playing with incredible little space. And uh, that ended up being a good play. Now, I did not miss these shots, which is, which is huge. We needed to hit some of them. I say no. None of that. <laughs> None of that. And uh, now we have these in space. There are 13 players left alive. That's 10 left alive on five squads. So there's not going to be too much. There's going to be a few red squads. That's one less of them. And it kind of is fighting on high ground, so we know where most of the people are by now. Uh, we walk up here, take this pretty decent position here. There's a lot of cover, and I'm just trying to peek wide, apply pressure. Again, I have the wingman. Uh, I, I don't think I mentioned this, but we, ha we had a boosted loader, so even though I just don't have a magazine, we got eight bullets in the mag right now. Um, ideally, I would have a purple mag as well, but I think one of my teammates took it when we were looting. It's fine. Try to force her out with the drill. I don't know how to miss it. Now I'm looking at it again, though. It's It was a little bit too deep. So that's what I'm doing right here. Getting the fast reload so I can actually pop my uh, booster loader. That being said, right here. stuff ended up happening that kind of canceled the plan. I was expecting it to be a team down here, which is why I peeked it. And then it just walked straight for the horizon. It was on high ground. Now, this is a very greedy peek, but I went back. Right there. Again, very cre uh, greedy. And I'm just kind of checking myself there and, and realizing that would be a huge throw if they peek from underneath the tunnel. And we have a great spot. And, uh, I mean, obviously I played this out, so I would kind of have a good idea of where the zone ends. But it, I think it ends, like, around here. My memory is horrible, guys. So that's something. But really, the point is... Actually, I think, I think it ends, like, right on top of us. It, all I remember is that where we are is the god spot for this particular zone. That's all I remember. And because we have the high ground, we have a lot of cover, and it's just not really much cover in front of us except the odd rock. So we're chilling. We're chilling. Now this guy dropped off, and I didn't really see why or when, but I, I have to assume it has to do with the zone closing, and it must have been right when I looked away. So you know, just to answer that question. But we're playing the we're playing the cover here pretty well. I'm bouncing around a lot. I'm trying to apply pressure. It's a little bit of a dance because yes, both. Every team wants to be the last one standing, but every team wants to eliminate, for example, rats. If I'm a full squad, I don't want any rats. That could end up being, you know, a bit of a stone in my shoe, so to speak. Um, you have to have them come up in late game and shoot me in the back and just turn the tides of the fight completely. Now... This guy being in the background here would probably end up being a problem for the team in the tunnel. So if you want to like 5D this, you would probably 5D chest, you would just not pressure him. But I'd rather just get any factors out of the game if I can. We're just sitting around for another minute or so anyway. So we might try while at the same time, which I'm trying not to risk myself or my teammates too much. I do want to try to apply enough pressure where we can get a knock or finish a rat too. Again, just lower the, the chance of an upset happening. 
Because at the end of the day, there are, I think it's a oh, one duo, worse. one solo, one full squad, and then us, the two full squads. If my memory serves me right, and it's I all could, about... But we have the best spot here, because they're stuck in the tunnel. He, he and uh, they do have a head glitch down here, now that I think about it, kind of. I'm going to pause, as you can see. Like Down here, there's a bit of a head glitch. It could play if they take it early. So looking at this again, probably was would be smarter not to pressure them or whatever the rats but that's fine uh we just need to not allow them to walk up behind here that's our big problem because if they walk up behind here i mean they're still kind of in a bad spot but we end up being in the middle of the zone where right where it pulls kind of exposed from a lot of angles and yeah they don't have cover but they're in the edge of zone so they're chilling that is another danger of being central So I wanted to go down there really bad and just try to pressure them, but again, you, you're gonna have a lot of risk with this tunnel. And it, honestly, even though, even though the host is trying to finish the the rat there, you just gotta stop him. Also, have my riot drill. Could have held a little bit more, but we we got it down. Now, I don't know who he, who he knocked, but now they can't go here anymore, which means that this whole side suddenly got unlocked, right? Wait, this is this one horizon. This pesky horizon that's just on the side here behind the truck that does interfere with our plans somewhat. But my teammates understand, yeah, we, we can take a lot of space here. They uh, wide swung on the one rat. And then I ping the horizon. They kill the horizon. I riot drill her. I whiff one shot, but we kill her. And now it's uh, 3v3. And this is just worst case scenario for the other team. They probably should have ran out earlier instead of just sitting around and, and, and quivering behind a uh, little rock. Because now all three of us are on high ground and they have nowhere to go but forward and up with absolutely zero cover and the zone constantly poking at their heels. And uh, Gibraltar actually gave them an opening here. That's nice of him because he ulted and kind of like made it impossible for me to actually commit to an angle. It's this interesting thing. And I was actually going for some style points here with my ultimate, but I, I guess some, somehow just hit the railing. That would have been kind of cool if we could knock him into the zone and kill him. But I'll take it. So again, the, the main takeaway here is that... Yeah, like we literally release a guide on... Uh, we literally release a guide on contests, like on how to contest other teams and whatnot for easy KP, which I will link on the screen in a little bit. You'll be able to click it here. But the main takeaway is that you want to play edge most of the time in a hyper aggressive lobby, uh, especially if you play if you play in the middle. The closer you are to the middle, the more likely you are to get third party, fifth party, then you'll just end up dying no matter how good you are. So you want to play edge, try to be a little bit smart about it, never all in. And uh, yeah, if you fight any other teams on the edge, you want to be the one all the way out by the edge because they might get third partied. It's a little bit of a power dynamic there. And then if it does happen that you can, when zone is closing, you can wrap up in front of them and all of a sudden you're the one who's ahead. You just have to be careful not to get third party. It's about picking the right battle. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. It is 3am. I'm probably going to stream a little bit and then go to bed. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow.